Hello, and welcome to another vlog. You may have noticed that I was getting a little scruffy last week, but as you can see, I've had a bit of a trim. So this week's theme is computer accessibility. Kind of like what we talked about a couple weeks ago with accessible video gaming, but more related to computers. So I wanted to spend a few minutes today talking about my personal experiences with computer accessibility. Also wanted to address some news from Microsoft and talk about a number of accessible apps um, that I've learned about. So let's get started. When I was in high school, I took a keyboarding course. Now it wasn't the most exciting class to take, but it really helped improve my typing skills. Now this is really important for me because I do most of my work on the computer. And as more and more activities become computerized, I rely on computers a lot more. So those advanced typing skills have really helped me out. Um, so I'm really glad that I, I took that course. Um, now I couldn't really say how fast I can type, probably 30 or 40 words a minute, um, but they did teach me how to type without looking at the keyboard. And um, so between my relatively quick typing speed, and I mean, I know those people who could type a lot faster than me, and my ability to type without looking, you know, it's, it's really made using computers a lot easier for me. Um, which is important because, like I said, I do most of my work on computers because I find it difficult to write for long periods of time. My hand tends to get tired after a while. Um, just because of my muscular dystrophy. Um, so that's really the extent of my personal computer accessibility experiences. I really very minimally use those features, but there are a lot of people, as um, you will see, who do rely on those features heavily. So that brings me to the next item on the list, which is news from Microsoft. So back in 2014, uh, a man named Steve Gleason, you may have heard of him. He is a former NFL player who was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, so ALS. Um, now, back in 2014, he challenged Microsoft to make their operating systems more inclusive for people with disabilities. So, in 2014, they had their first event called a hackathon, which is a one week event in which the Microsoft employees um, brainstorm new ideas that um, challenge the boundaries of technology. Um, so one of the teams came up with something called the eye gaze wheelchair, which is a wheelchair that the user can control using only their eyes. Um, now Microsoft really liked that piece of technology. So they took the eye tracking functionality and added support for eye tracking to Windows 10, which is in the most recent Windows 10 update. Um, now, it's only in its beta phase right now, so it's not perfect. It's probably a lot of bugs that need to be worked out. But what this does is it opens the doors for people with disabilities to control Windows using their eyes, uh, assuming they have the right uh, hardware. Um, and it also opens the doors for third-party developers to come in and to develop software and other features that use that eye tracking functionality to make Windows even more inclusive. Um, so that's very exciting that they've added that to Windows. That's especially useful for people with very severe disabilities such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy or uh, ALS. Um, so it's really good to see that Microsoft's doing that and hopefully other tech companies will follow suit. So that brings me to the last thing I want to talk about today. Um, I did some homework and I found a number of accessible apps designed for people with disabilities. So I want to talk about those. Um, so I have um, 10 different apps that I've chosen, um, all for different types of disabilities, and I just want to talk about them. So the first app is called Access Now, um, which is published by a company called Accessibility Now. 
Um, it's an app that allows users to find and share accessibility information about local venue, venues, so hotels, restaurants, stores, etc., and also to locate accessibility features uh, in their local community. Um, it's designed for people of all abilities, obviously, just anyone who wants to see if the uh, venue they're going to is accessible. Um, it was The company was founded by a woman named Mayan Zeb. She's a photographer and an entrepreneur from Toronto who has muscular dystrophy. Um, I'm good friends with Mayan, which is part of the reason why I'm talking about this app right now, but also because it is a very good app. Um, so I encourage everyone to check that out. The next app is called Assistive Touch, which is published by the Assistive Touch team, and it allows users to access their smartphone buttons from their home screen. It's ideal for people with limited dexterity who might not be able to push the volume or power keys on their phone, so now they don't have to, they can just access it from their home screen. The next app on the list is called Avaz. It's an iPad only app published by Avaz Inc. Um, and it allows people to communicate using only pictures. So it's designed specifically for people who are nonverbal. Um, like I said, it's an iPad-only app, but for Android users, there's a similar app called Jab Talk, published by Jabstone LLC. It works pretty much the same way, but it's just for Android devices. Um, so I'll include links to those two and every other app so you can check them out. Um, the fourth app on our list is called Be My Eyes. So be My Eyes is an app that allows users to provide or receive help via live chat, right? So it, it's really good for people who are blind or visually impaired. Um, for example, if you want to identify the expiry date on a carton of milk, but you can't see it, uh, you can get up the app and use it to connect with someone who can tell you what the expiry date is and you can also use it to provide help uh, to people with who are blind or visually impaired. Um, so that brings us to the next app. Uh, number five on our list is called Google Talkback. This is an Android only app uh, published by Google and basically what it does is it provides uh, the user with vibration and audio feedback to let them know what's happening on their device and help them navigate their device. So it'll tell them what's on screen and what's happening on screen. Um, and again, this is designed specifically for people who are blind or visually impaired, but that's not to say that it can't benefit other people as well who aren't disabled. Um, so number six is called Guide Dots, Audio Walking Guide. Again, this is an Android-only app. Um, I use an Android, so you'll notice that a lot of these apps are Android only. It's published by a company called UDKU, and basically what it does is it provides users with building and root information using voice commands, so um, almost kind of like a, a GPS for people who are blind or visually impaired. Um, number seven is called IFTTT. Um, it allows users to automate their services such as Twitter, Google, email, things like that using built-in applets. Um, this could be good for people with disabilities who struggle to do complex tasks, but it can also be good for anyone who's just looking for automation. Um, it can also do things like turn on and off lights, assuming you have the right equipment. Um, number eight is red panic button. A red panic button isn't necessarily designed for people with disabilities. Um, it's published by a company called Ultimate Communication Software Limited, and it allows users to send an alert to their emergency contact during an urgent situation. Um, so like I said, you know, it's not just for people with disabilities. Um, it can be good for people with disabilities who may need urgent assistance, but it's kind of a good app, I guess, for anyone to have. Um, and there's a lot of similar apps. Um, so that's just one of many. Uh, number nine is called Roger Voice. Roger Voice is an app that allows users to close caption conversations in real time. So that's really good for someone who is um, deaf or hard of hearing who wants to have a natural conversation with someone. 
This way they can chat with someone and, and hear what they're saying. Um, especially if they don't use sign language or something. Um, and then finally, number 10 is called Tap Tap C, uh, published by a company called CamFind. And basically what it does is it identifies objects using the phone's built-in camera. Um, again, this is designed for people who are blind or visually impaired. Um, so if you hold an object up to the camera using this app, it'll tell you what it is, and supposedly it's very accurate. So again, good for people who are blind or visually impaired, but also maybe kind of a neat party trick. Um, so like I said, I'll include links to each of those apps in the description, so maybe you can try them out. Um, let me know which one's your favorite. Um, and tune in on Thursday when I'll be releasing the educational video talking about what computer accessibility is. Um, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you on Thursday. Thanks for watching.